Suspension of Disbelief is the name of the game today. Not only because we're talking about a series with a reasonable amount of supernatural elements, but also because there are particular elements to this show's premise that honestly seem unlikely given the abilities of our main characters. So welcome ladies, gentlemen, and others as we take a brief look at the newly airing anime for spring 2022, Spy Family. Or Spy X Family, since we finally have a modern show to continue the age-old discussion of is it Hunter X Hunter or just Hunter Hunter? And I am here for it. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Glass Reflection would like to thank the sponsor of the video today being the good people over at Surfshark VPN. A VPN, for those who don't know, is a way to help protect your privacy and what you view online as you surf and watch anime and videos on the web. Not only does it secure your data, encrypting it to help stop people from eavesdropping on your connection, but it also allows you to mask your location. Doing so allows you to bypass the region locking of a variety of streaming services, as not all streaming services are equal in what regions they service. So having a VPN like Surfshark can help you access shows you might otherwise be unable to. Content blocked on services such as Netflix and YouTube can be accessible simply by connecting to the local server of the country you would like to access. And of course, Surfshark is available on a variety of devices as well as your PC, so you can stream your anime on the go if you so choose. There will be a link and a promo code in the description where you can sign up for a percentage off as well as an extra three months free because we like you guys oh so much. And best of all, if you try it out and you find that it doesn't help, it isn't doing what you expected, or it doesn't end up unblocking the content that you wanted to unblock, Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked. So thank you very much to Surfshark for sponsoring, and let's get back to the video. Spy Family follows an overarching Cold War-esque conflict between two, shall we say, European-adjacent fictional countries. Our main character is the well-renowned spy Twilight. Twilight is given the task to spy on the leader of an extremist faction of their rival country. But unlike any traditional method of keeping tabs on the man, the only point of access is the guy's son, who attends a local private school. And despite being exceptionally good at disguises, Twilight has the limit of not actually being able to impersonate a six-year-old. It'd actually be really weird if he could. So he takes on the name of Lloyd Forger and goes looking for a child to help his mission and infiltrate the school. Enter Anya, a local orphan girl, deathly afraid of abandonment, who also happens to be an esper, capable of reading minds. She charms her way into Lloyd's good graces while keeping her own powers a secret, and the plan to infiltrate the school begins in earnest. The driving interest in this series, however, is just how it manages to create creative conflicts that are capable of challenging our characters without being easily boring or so difficult that it relies on coincidence and sloppy writing to have our characters succeed. That's not to say that there aren't interesting choices that the plot makes that you're just gonna have to gloss over. Episode 2 introduces a woman named Yor, codenamed Thorn Princess. She's a professional assassin whose real identity, similar to Lloyd's, is unknown by the general populace. And she ends up in a situation where, as a single woman in her late 20s, her existence in this society is suspicious without a husband and a family. As such, her job comes into jeopardy. Meanwhile, Lloyd discovers that as part of the admittance process to Anya's school, an interview needs to occur with both of the child's parents, so he needs to find a wife. They all bump into each other, and Anya, thinking that yours job as an assassin is just so cool, uses her cuteness to get these two professionals on the same page and realize that hooking up is in the best interest of everyone, really. But for some reason, neither of them, despite their pronounced ability in each of their professions has any idea about the real identity of the other, even when it is so blaringly obvious. I'm a psychiatrist who has people come after me with guns. Sounds legit. Of course, from this point onwards, Anya, being the esper who can read minds, is the only character with full knowledge of everyone's abilities and professions. So really, that's the bit that you're gonna have to forgive. She's the only one who knows. With the skills portrayed by both Lloyd and Yor throughout the series, the idea that they would not even be able to suss out the other or even begin to suspect what they both do is really questionable. Now, thankfully, the circumstances that occur to keep those secrets in place is half of the show's fun. And assuming that we don't break hard from the manga material, there are several upcoming stories that interweave missions given to both Lloyd and Yor who complete them without the other being any the wiser. Though we and Anya get to see all and can appreciate their efforts. There is really a welcome level of 
levity throughout the work, usually driven by the bundle of cuteness that is Anya, but also just the act of forcing these characters into a situation that they would have otherwise completely avoided is great. Lloyd spends a good amount of time when we first meet him lamenting that he has left the possibility of being a husband and a father behind when he became a spy, as being a spy is not really a profession that's suited to such things. Likewise, family attachments would do nothing but hamper an assassin like your should her identity be discovered. And while it's not yet clear on how Anya got left on her own, especially with her abilities, being a child who had already gone through three orphanages in a year her finding any kind of stability was becoming less and less likely. So now to have both a mama and a papa who may not love her unconditionally as she might get from a traditional family is still far more than she had been getting. And the attachments between the trio only grow from here. We don't get many stories that cover the topic of a found family these days. Like you can find plenty of media both within anime and otherwise that cover what bloodbound characters are willing to do for one another, just, you know, because of their birth. But I feel like those kinds of decisions hold so much more weight when the family is a chosen one, like here. So like if Lloyd, for example, saves the life of either your or Anya, he could justify it to himself as it's just all for the sake of the mission. I feel like as the series progresses, that's gonna become less and less true. Spy Family is so far an amazing series, if for no other reason than it shows us a wonderful, loving family that potentially some of us either wish to have or strive to make their own families a bit more like. I'll have a link down in the description so you can check out the series on streaming. The manga, of course, is available on the Viz Media app, which I also recommend. And lastly, a very special thank you to my patrons who make it possible for me to do what I do. And I can't ever thank you guys enough. So if you are a patron, thank you. And if you're not a patron, there will also be a link down in the description where you can support the show if you so choose. And a very special thank you to those patrons who help out just that little bit more. Specifically, Hector Montemayor, Rifen Bonaparte, Omar Showman, Sid Yamako, and Wago221, because you guys are especially awesome, and I thank you. So until next time, ladies, gentlemen, and others, watch more anime, and stay frosty.